All right, check this out. Political geography is concerned with these two things, how we administer and how we organize the space of the earth. This in the back here is a political map. Political maps are divisions on the earth's surface that tell us where states are. Notice that I didn't say the word country. In human geo, we're gonna try and use the word state when we refer to countries, okay? It's a synonym of the word country. You might be used to calling countries states, okay? Or you might just be used to calling them countries. What I want you to get used to here is calling them states with the S, okay? Now, that's, that's basically what political geo is. It's how we organize and how we administer space on Earth, okay? Now, this has a lot of relevance today because a lot of the news you'll see today has to do with political geography. A state is the same word for country. A state means a political unit with control over internal and external affairs. What does all this mean? This means that if you have a state, you have a country. But you have control over what you do inside your state and what the other parts of the world have to do with your state. So let's, let's explain what this means. I know this sounds kind of weird, but the United States is a state. Okay? Other parts of the world see the U.S. as a state. In fact, when we meet with like people from Russia or from China, they refer to the United States as the state of the United States. Right? Now, this means that we have control over what happens inside our country and what, what happens outside. So we have control, for example, about political affairs here. Affairs, I mean problems or issues. Okay? So that word affairs, I don't mean like when someone cheats on someone else, okay? I mean like political issues or political problems, right? This means that if you have control, you have what's known as a country, okay? Nation state is a little different though, because to be a nation state, you have to have an ethnic group in that place, and that ethnic group has to have what we call sovereign territory. It means that I have control over myself, that I have control over my territory, right? So if I say here, an ethnicity with sovereign territory, that means that it's an ethnic group that has control over their territory. I was going to write down an example for nation state, but you could just write it down right next to your definition. For nation state, something as simple as the Tigua nation here in Isleta, that's an ethnicity with a sovereign territory. A nation state is an ethnicity with a sovereign territory. Notice that I combined the word state with nation. So then the word nation must mean the same as ethnicity. If you remember in the last chapter, chapter 7, the chapter on ethnicities, if you have nationalism, what does that mean, nationalism? It, it's not that you're just from a place, but that you're proud. proud, exactly. That's nationalism. You're proud of your ethnic group. Patriotism is almost the same. You're right. It's almost the same. Patriotism and nationalism are almost the same. They're connected. Now, self-determination means that you have the right to govern yourself. Self-determination is very tied in with this word sovereignty. Okay? This means that if, you're, if you've got self-determination, you've got control and you've got power in your nation. Okay? Multi-ethnic state is just a state that has more than one ethnicity inside it. Is the United States a multi-ethnic state? Yes. yes, we are. What are the multiple ethnicities we have? <laughs> we have Mexican Americans, we have African Americans, we have Asian Americans. We are a multi-ethnic state. Now, states around the world don't always fit into this definition because states like Japan, for example, Japan is not multi-ethnic. Japan is just a state. Think about what I just said. Japan is not multi-ethnic. All the people in Japan, or the majority of the people in Japan, belong to one single ethnic group, the Japanese. Now, multinational state means that it's more than one ethnicity with histories of self-determination. What does this mean? It's a complicated term. But a multinational state is a country in which various or many different nations live. The United States is also multinational. 
But the nations that I'm talking about are Indians, Native Americans. Okay? We have several nations of Native Americans in the U.S. Who are these nations? There's the Cherokee, there's the Tigua. Who else? There's Yaquis, there's uh, uh, Iroquois, there's Inuit, there's Navajo. There's a bunch of nations of Native Americans living in the United States. That's why the U.S. is both multi-ethnic and multinational. Okay? And check this out. The U.S. is even just a state. Notice how the United States can fit into these three. Okay? Good. All right. All right. You're used to seeing this and saying, that's 50 states. And you're right. You're right. For the majority of our lives, we're taught that in the United States, there are 50 divisions called states. And you're still right. But for the purpose of this class, what I want you to think about is that not just these are called states, but these are called states as well. Okay? okay? So we have states within a state? We do. We have 50 states within our state. In the world, we try to count these every year, and we have problems counting. Why? Because it's real clear how some are states, like Brazil is a state, but it's kind of unclear how others are states. Let me show you an example. Right here in Western Sahara, this, this little section right here of the map, let me go back. This section of the map right here, that country called Western Sahara, that country gained independence from a country called Morocco a long time ago. But Morocco has refused to let them go. Morocco's like that boyfriend that doesn't want the girl to leave, right? He just wants to hold on. Please don't leave me, right? So let's talk about what this means. Today, you're going to be doing an activity about the Soviet Union. So I'm going to use this as an example of states, okay? Here's the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union used to be 15 independent republics or independent states, okay? This area of the world is in Asia and Europe, okay? Notice that's a big country right there called Russia. Then we got the Black Sea here and the Caspian Sea, and we got 15 little states around it. That used to be called the Soviet Union. Okay. Notice what I put here. It's a multinational state with 15 republics that are now independent states. We don't have a Soviet Union anymore since 1991. In 1991, this dissolved. In other words, it broke apart. Not physically. I mean, these places can't separate physically from Russia. But in the figurative sense, these places separated from the Soviet Union. The reason why that place dissolved is because for a long time, all these little ethnic groups that lived inside of the Soviet Union wanted to be independent. The majority of the people in Russia are ethnically Russian. But the problem is that there are other groups within the borders that want self-determination. What does that mean again? To govern themselves, exactly. They don't want to be part of Russia. This means that these people inside of Russia want to be independent. The Slavic peoples, the Turkic peoples, the other Indo-European peoples, the Paleo-Siberian people, the Uralic and Altaic peoples, they want to separate from Russia. And so they do. In 1991, they become their own independent nations. This is Ukraine. It's a country south of Russia. And Ukraine, this map shows you the different, the different groups of people that live in Ukraine. Most of this side right here is native Russians. But this area down here got invaded by Russia in 2014. This area down here got invaded and taken over by Russia in 2014. Why? Because Russia wants this place back. Because most of the people that live there are Russians. And so Russia thinks, if the people that live here are Russians, why don't they belong to my country? I'm going to invade and I'm going to bring them back. So they took over this place. And Obama and his administration didn't like that because that's an act of war. When you invade another country, that's called a war. But Russia said, we're not invading. They were ours all along. We're just taking back what's ours. In the other nations, notice that there's borders between them. But within those borders, notice these colors. That means that inside of each of these independent states, there are several ethnic groups that are trying to have their own countries. They're trying to have their own self-determination. This happens all around the world, guys. In the U.S., for example, in the state of Texas, there's a small group of people that believe that they should have the right to have their own country within Texas. Yeah, 
They call themselves secessionists. It's 2017. It's not 1865 in the Civil War. This is 2017, and there are a group of, of Texans that believe they should be their own independent state. It's amazing, right? They want to. They've actually submitted to the legislature, the state Congress, that they want to be an independent nation. Yeah. <laughs> they want a country within a country? They want a country within a country, yeah. So how, oh, they would want to have a little part of Texas that, ha that has a lot of oil, and they would split up Texas, and they would say, this is the republic of whatever they're going to call it, right? And, and they have already decided that they want to do this, but when Barack Obama heard about this, he stamped it out. He said, no, that's impossible. You can't do that. And the people said... We, we will fight. And Barack Obama said, we will send you in the army and the armed forces and you'll see who you fight against. And so the people backed off a little bit. They said, all right, never mind. Five places in Central Asia, five places, one called Turkmenistan. I know a lot of these names sound the same, but this last part, Stan, notice that it repeats, it repeats on all of them. You see that? Stan. Stan is a, is a suffix that means the people of. So think about what I just said. The people of Turkmeni, the people of Uzbeki, the people of Kazakhs, the people of Kyrgyz, the people of Tajiks. That's what Stan means. Okay? Like the word Pakistan or Afghanistan, they mean literally the people of Afghani or the people of Paki. These independent nation states right here have had levels of conflict over the last 20, 30 years. I'm talking about there's been wars in Iran, there's been wars in Afghanistan. You've heard this in the news, guys. There's wars in Iraq, which is around here, right? These places have a lot of oil, a lot of good natural resources. And countries like ours, we like oil. We depend on oil. We need to have our nice cars. Nice cars need gas. And gas comes from oil.